Guitar practice session 102824. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me to verbalize what I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind better, provide information to others that might be working on a similar thing, and possibly provide for feedback if anybody sees a different or better way to try to learn the things I'm trying to learn. I do think that presenting the information all as though somebody is listening even if no one is is useful because it helps us to articulate the things in our mind in a way we might not otherwise do therefore if you want to take these resources and make your own practice session you can do that i'll try to provide like the worksheet for example don't worry about plagiarism you can do whatever you want out with the worksheet and it's going to be orientated from the perspective of playing the guitar looking to utilize uh, the, that perspective as best we can so we can just focus on the positions here. So that means that I'm going to have, if we put the guitar on the screen, strings first, top to bottom, the top string being the one closest to the ceiling, the heavy E string, top to bottom, left to right, same orientation that we're looking at from behind the guitar. I'm going to flip my guitar around on the screen so it looks like I'm left-handed. So once again, the orientation is the same as the worksheet, which is the same from your perspective from behind the guitar. We're this time going to be focusing in on, once again, the minor scale. We're going to be looking at the bottom strings and, and looking at the relative uh, third position. And uh, that is, of course, inherently useful because the minor scale is the second most popular uh, scale. However, before we get into that, I want to give the overarching view. So I go over my overarching perspective. So I have it in my mind as I'm learning the new stuff to try to, fig to, try to figure out how, as I get in the weeds here, to implant in my mind, in the back of my mind at least, that I'm trying to put this into the bigger picture. And just a quick recap of the bigger picture, I jump on over to the related modes and we just go over the fact that we're looking at the minor scale, which is a mode variant of the major scale. And what I'd like to be able to do is learn the relationship basically in this order, right? I want to learn the major scale. And then I could learn, as we already have, the intervals differences between the two modes that are related to the major scale because they're going to be most similar. So I want to build on what I already know and then I learn the minor mode, which is the Aeolian mode, which I could still compare to the major mode, but there's going to be much more differences because the minor mode is about as far away as you can get from the major, right? It's like the opposite side. If you think of the cir a circle, kind of, or it's the most different in terms of the intervals, which is why it's useful uh, to learn because then we can compare the modes that are more similar to it, which are the minor modes, the two that have a minor third, the Dorian and the Phrygian, to uh, the minor scale. So that's usually how we, we'd want to memorize the stuff, which is why we often think of the Ionian and Aeolian, which is the minor scale and the major scale, as like its own thing, right? It's, it's separate. It's a major scale and minor. It's not a mode. It's a scale, right? It's like, but... I, I, as I learned it, I want to put it back in the perspective of it being, you know, just two of the modes and then think about what's the most efficient way for me to learn the modes so that I can play between the modes and also so that when I'm playing in any of the modes, I know how to play the related modal chords so I can play chords that are still in the same key. And again, the ordering for that would typically be learn the majors, learn the interval related to the major in terms of the actual intervals this way, as well as the intervals in terms of chord creation, skipping every other note, compare the majors to the major modes, which we can look at from a practical standpoint, from a chord creation standpoint, to play chords that are in the same key, but also from a modal standpoint, so we can jump to the different modes and just play in the different modes and look at all the other modes and modal chords related to the other modes and then learn the, ma the minor key, which is actually what I started learning on the guitar, like I think many people do because you start learning that rock and roll position, position one, number one that I would call, which basically leads you to play in A minor a lot of the time. But then I learned these ones by comparing it to the major 
and then you can compare the minor modes to it, which which is going to be the easiest way to to just build on what you've already learned because there's only going to be one interval difference between the minor modes and the aeolian. So that's what we're working on now. We go then to the to the minor over here and we look at the the last three strings because we did the top three strings yesterday we're going to cross the the fault line here so that means that the shapes we saw yesterday are going to vary and i try to concentrate on that a little bit more as i look at the shapes as we cross uh, the fault line and then once we get the interval i'll add the fifth so we can look at the common chord constructions and uh, that's going to be what we will continue to do today I do a joke in there somewhere, still somewhat political season, so it's got a little bit of politics in it. So if you want to skip it, uh, you could skip it if that's going to uh, annoy you. It's not here to annoy you or anything, you know, but I think, you know, it's the funny, you know, funny things are often annoying things to many people. That's part of the part of the, the thing anyway. So that's my practice joke in any case. And then I kind of kind of just jam around in the key of A minor since we're in the minor key. Uh, at the end and talk about adding like I'm talking about adding like the blue note to the minor note and then I and then I try to add like this note right before the minor a minor the a root note to try to introduce into my plane like another something outside the key right which in your plane in the in the in the minor key that would be often the blue note which is like a flat five and then possibly I'm sliding in I'm going to slide into the to home uh, uh, with with the G sharp. So I kind of talk about that a little bit. That's it. Today we're continuing on with the minor scale, otherwise known as mode number six, the Aeolian mode, focusing in on the third of it, but this time for the bottom three strings of the guitar, because I think we did the top three strings yesterday, noting that of course the third interval as it relates to the minor scale or mode six, the Aeolian mode, is inherently useful. We can clearly see the usefulness of it because the minor scale is the second most popular scale, only second to uh, the major scale. And of course, the third is going to be the most important interval of it because it's the differentiating interval between a minor triad and a major triad. And the triads are, of course, the ground base of any kind of chord constructions typically in uh, Western music. That's basically uh, the foundation. However, I still want to kind of keep going back to the overall project in my mind and keep recapping it because I want to have the overarching vision of what I'm trying to do in in uh, my mind and I want to see the relationship of uh, the minor scale from a modal perspective to the other modes so I can easily kind of try to move between them. So to reiterate that in my mind, I'm going to go back to the relative modes and remembering that we start up top with the major scale otherwise known as the ionian mode and i just want to keep remembering in my mind that although the major scale and the minor scale are so important to western music that we've pulled them out from the modal terminology to now calling them like scales instead of modes and then all the other modes dorian phrygian lydian mixolydian and locrian we kind of put them at, on a second tier as compared to the pedestal of the major scale and the minor scale but uh, when we look at them from just a modal structure they're just kind of two not nodes in the modal structure two nodes in the tapestry they all fit together and we can look at the, the whole thing from any perspective kind of like again from a physics standpoint you can take a time a frame of reference any frame of reference if we were on the moon we could do measurements from the moon right there's no special point and and we can look at it from any any angle and from that that's like the modal so it's kind of more like a, a fractal picture all of these things are connected i think one of the problems with music is we try to look at it kind of linearly and uh, try to come up with certain rules that are set in certain places but really those rules are changing depending on your perspective like where are you looking at it from where are you starting from that's really the complication and when you start doing that you start to see things from kind of different angles i can look at it from whatever angle would be most suitable 
depending on what my objective is. I can't just have one rigid rule. I got to be able to see it from different areas so that I can, you know, do different things with it. And that's kind of one way we might kind of like envision the modes. So within the modes, we've got the Ionian mode, which is the major scale, and then the uh, Aeolian mode. So we can see here that they are related. These are our two most common scales. We typically like memorize them again, like independently, like this is the Ionian scale. And then this is going to be the, the major scale or the major scale and the minor scale. We kind of just memorize them separately, but I think it would be make more sense to actually look at them as modes because that's going to make it easier for us to build in our mind off of what we already know when we're adding new information to it, which of course is a lot easier to construct in our mind. We want to take what's already there and then add to it uh, rather than trying to take what's already there and then go to this whole new place as if it's completely different and not use the things that are already in our mind that we can tie to the other things because the whole point of this process of learning is the connections of the different ideas off of into wider time wider connections, right? We want to see the connections that are more distant. So, and that's, I think, what learning really is. So the trick is, how can I learn the new thing while tying it into what I already know? Because that's going to make it a lot easier for me to ground the new thing, right? So, um, so how would we do that? I would say, well, the overall project is we're going to say, I want to learn the major scale and I want to learn the relative positions on the major scale, one through seven, seven notes out of 12 uh, notes. And I want to be able to make a chord on each of those uh, notes. I'm looking at the C major, but the same principle is for any, any uh, mode, any major scale and all the related modes related to it. I want to be able to make a, a chord from it, at least a triad, a three note chord, and then to add other notes that I want to when I want to the seven, nine, 11 and uh, 13. So, so to do that, then I would have to memorize to some degree that I would make a major chord from the one, four, five has a major chord, which means it has a major third in it as opposed to a minor third. And then on the two, three and six, I make a minor chord, which means that it has a minor third instead of a major third. So that gets me to a very practical point where I can play songs, I can do a lot of different things uh, just with that. But uh, if I go to another mode, like the Dorian mode, or the Phrygian mode, or the Lydian mode, or let's go down to the Mixolydian mode again, now we have the related Mixolydian, the same notes are here. We have this, the relative positions, however, are different. We have different notes, they're the same overall notes, but the relative positions have changed which means it's difficult for me to determine which of those notes I'm going to make a major chord on and which would make a minor chord to still fit in the same key. Therefore, we would like to use the, the major scale as our Rosetta Stone, as our point of reference. That's why I'm giving these absolute mode numbers, because to me, that's a very practical way to do this. So, for example, if I was, wanted to see like the fourth, of the Mixolydian scale and know, okay, the fourth is a C, but do I make a major or minor chord from it? Well, I could say, well, uh, if I go back up top and I say, well, the fourth, if I'm on Mixolydian and I use this numbering system to number the modes, I could see the fourth would be the Lydian. So the fourth in essence is the Lydian mode, right? So if I'm actually playing in uh, the Lydian mode, I can see the Lydian mode, it's the fourth, which means that if I was on the first, it's one, two, three steps down. Or in other words, it's four minus one, three steps down. So the formula would be, if I'm looking for the fourth of the Mixolydian, it would be the mode that I'm, I'm sorry, the what was I on? Now I went to the Lydian. <laughs> if I was on the fourth of the Lydian, I would say that I'm going to take the Lydian, four, uh, minus one would be three, plus the relative position of the Lydian, and that would be four, five, six, seven, which would get me to mode number seven or the seventh relative position in the major scale, which happens to be the funny one, the Locrian at one. So I'd know, okay, that's the diminished at one that we would have to deal with in, in that particular case. So that gives, that's a 
a practical way to try to get out of just playing in the major scale so we can also play in, in the other modes. And we have the same problem, of course, with the minor scale, which is what our focus is on here, because the minor scale is the Aeolian mode related to the major scale. So it's the sixth uh, of uh, the major scale. So in the A, in this case, the A minor is the same notes as the C major. But again, the relative positions are different. We have relative positions one through seven and a different ordering of the notes based on us looking from the perspective of starting at the sixth, thinking of the notes as a circle, and then basically going around the notes that way, which happens to generate, if I choose every other note, the, 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 the chord constructions here. Now, so I could do the same thing here and say, okay, with the minors, I could say, I need, if I wanna see, do I make a major or minor chord, off of the notes in the minor scale, well, I can say the minor scale is the sixth of the major scale. So if I'm looking at, say, the fifth of the minor scale, I would take the sixth mode, Aeolian, minus one plus five would be uh, six, six minus one would be five, which would be 10. And because there's only seven modes, 10 minus seven would be three. And that gives us to mode number three or the third relative position to the major scale. And I know that the two, three and six is where I make a minor chord relative to the major scale. Therefore this E I can make, I know I'd make a minor chord from it, which would fit in the Aeolian. Now, however, because the Aeolian is, is so important, the minor scale is so important, you might just memorize the relative positions for it outright uh, so that you can compare the other minor modes, Dorian and Phrygian to the Aeolian or the main minor scale. And we can compare the major modes, which are gonna be the Lydian and Mixolydian to the main major, which is of course the Ionian mode. So, so and it's, it's kind of easy to do that to some degree because the, on the minor scale, it happens to be the one, four, five, once again, is the minor modes, which is kind of cool because in the major, like, and that's why you might think of like minor blues and major blues as being a one, four, five, or you just might think of as a one, four, five as your basic progressions, either in the major scale or minor scale, which will result in all major chords in the major scale, all minor chords in the minor scale, which is a great thing to practice because if you want to practice your minor shapes, then you can play the one, four, five, and they all have the same relative triad positions. And so that's great. So I can memorize that because I can say, well, that's, it's mirroring what happens on the major. I'm trying to build off of what I already know on the major and find different ways to kind of think about it. Say, okay, the one, four, five on the major is, is uh, the, the three majors and then the one, four, five, on relative positions to the minors, so the one four five gives me the 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 the, 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 the three minor chords in a minor. Now the other the, the thing that doesn't match is if I go to the major up top, it's like okay, well where are the if I went to the major, I have the one four five are going to be the major chord constructions, and then it's usually the two three and six are minor, and then that weird one is on uh, the diminishes on the seven. If I try to continue my logic on the minor does the one four five still works the one four five is good but the two is where you get the funny locrian so the two is the locrian i have to keep that in mind and that leaves me with where the majors are because the one four five are all taken so now the one is a minor the two is now locrian and then the four and the five are minor that leaves the three six seven so on the minor scale, it's the three, six, seven relative positions that are the major chords and the diminished is the two, which is kind of funny, right? So that's one, that's another way that I could basically uh, look at that. All right. So I don't know if I just rambled for no reason there, but now I'm going to, I think I said different. So I'm kind of trying to keep that in my mind. So now I'm going to say that I have the one, the one, three, five is my chord construction for the minor scale, and uh, if I look and if I looked at the minor as related to the major up here, I'd be playing the six. 
the six would be the Aeolian mode, and it results in a minor uh, a, a minor chord because it has a uh, flat third. So remember, if I'm in the major scale and I was doing chord constructions, and I'm going to unhide these, then then this chord construct this numbering system is based on the chords just skipping every other note usually but now i've added the skipped notes and then this system down here is just is just reordering the same notes in the scale but starting on the six so right if i went to this a b c d just in a circle a b c d so this aeolian mode is this set of notes is of course the aeolian mode which i can just simply think of it from this worksheet as what i'm going to use to build my chords from so this but the chords are of course modal chords built from the related aeolian scale which has all the same notes in it as the c major in this case uh, but from the numbering system i usually we usually hide the two and then we hide the four and then we hide uh, the six was already hidden. And then I end up with every other note. I, I had the six, right? If I had unhid the six, there's, you know, the six. And then I hide the six. So now we, now we take every other note. That's how we build a chord. So we just take the one, three, five. And that's going to be our, our chord construction. And then we can, so our project then is going to be that, that on the, on the major scales, I take all of these intervals and think about them from the major scale. And then I try to figure out what's different, which intervals are different. Now, I, the easiest way to do that is to break out the majors and the minors. So I know that these two modes, the four and the five are very similar to the major mode because they both have a major third and that's the defining factor to make them a major mode and they both only have one distinct interval so what we did before is on the majors i learned all these and then or we at least we practiced those and then we practiced these two to look at the distinctive intervals which are different now we're going to do the same thing on the minor again we could think of the minor as it relates to the major and we'll do that to think about the minor intervals, but there's a significant amount of different intervals in the minor. And that's why we're, we break the modes out into major and minor, right? So minor is the other major interval that we usually take our perspective from and think of it as like the main minor, the parent minor. And then, so I want to learn all of these in a similar way as we learned the intervals for these so that I can compare the other two minor modes to it, which will be the Dorian and the Phrygian, which will once again only have one uh, distinct interval from the main minor. So that's our kind of our overall project. So when, I, when we look at the minor mode, I can look at the intervals as though I'm playing the six and look at the intervals that are different from the, the one or I can, of course, think of myself as being in the minor mode and thinking of it as the main minor, which I want to memorize almost as important as memorizing the intervals for the main major because it gives me access then to compare the other minor modes to it. Uh, and that, so that's the idea. So that's my whole project. All right. That was a long rant, man. I don't even know if I, like, what are you even talking about? I think I'm dizzy. All right, so now we're going to go over here and let's go to like somewhere down below, like on the C. So we left off on like the C, I think. Let's start on this one. So now I'm just going to look at, I'm going to look at every note. on. I want to be able to look at every note on the guitar and find every third that's available on the guitar related to it, which I can do by just choosing a note somewhere in the middle of the guitar on each string and then looking at the six thirds that are relative to it because there's only six strings and there's only going to be one third on each string within an octave, the octave going from uh, one to 12 uh, frets. And then once I find that, then I can also see, can I add the one and the fifth to see how I might make 
uh, chord constructions from from the one from the one and the third, or in other words, can I reach a fifth as well to create a chord from it? All right, that's the project. Okay, so now we're on the C. So I'm going to go then over here. Well, let's go above it first. Now, if I go above it, so remember, if you watched yesterday, then we were we did the top three strings. The third relative positions are always going to be the same. Meaning, when I was on this G. I had, a, I had a relative position that's going to be the same as this, the C's relative position here. That's going to work every time, except when we get down past the, uh, the, the kink and the tuning, the fault line, and then we've got to adjust for that. So I can see these positions will start to be familiar or should start to be familiar. But of course, we have now revealed a new string up top by moving down to this string. So I have a new opportunity for a third on this top string and so that's that's where we're at okay and then of course down below this is where the fault line hits so we're gonna have different shapes down below once we hit the fault line all right so we're gonna say here we go so if i'm going above it i want to find the inverse so if i'm looking at a three note away uh minor third three note away minor third the inverse is 12 minus three which is nine, which would be a major six. So if I count up, it would be five and then six, seven, eight, nine. So this would be from here to here, there's a distance between those two notes of nine notes away from top to bottom. And therefore the inverse is a three note away minor third. So I'm gonna go from here to here uh, on the D. Okay, so that's a nine note away, minor third. And then if I go from bottom to top, I'm sorry, nine note away, major third, top to bottom, bottom to top, three note away, minor third. And then is there anything else I can grab? There's not much else I can do. I might be able to get this third right here, but that's not really helping me. I already have a third. Like I could grab that maybe. not really it's not the most useful of shapes but I see it I see I see it out there let's move up to the next one so now we've got a third up here again I want to find there should be a distance between these notes of nine since it's above it so the distance from here to here is five distance from here to here would be ten and then going this way would be nine I would call it negative five negative ten and then nine so I'm gonna say all right here we're gonna go boom boom so I want to start to see that shape as a, from, t from top to bottom, it would be a nine note away. Now, hold on a second. Uh, yeah. Uh, from top to bottom, it would be a nine note away major uh, nine. But from bottom to top, it would be a three note away uh, minor third so I want to be able to visualize that going both ways which is probably I have less in my mind as when I'm going below it okay then I want to add the fifth and there's a fifth right above it and so that's another thing I just want to kind of visualize the fifth and we'll take a look at the fifth later again because it's so important but it's it's usually right above unless we're on the fault line that's where one fifth is so we have this, I can make that, that would be the three, five, one, three, five, one. Could bar that, might be another way you might do it. Although you gotta be careful not to play the, the E underneath it if you do it that way. So we have that, that's Mui B to the N. I also have a, uh, another third here. So we could go back here and say now I've got I've got this uh, I've got this this and then I could grab that third too could grab uh, these and that just to get the fifth and the uh, added third okay and this shape by the way just to show this 
clearly this shape, if I look at this shape, uh, that is the minor, uh, uh, minor shape that if I, if I played it like this, the bar shape, that's our, clearly our, uh, well, hold on. It's the, it's, it's, this is our bar shape. There's my C. I'm right. So that would be our A minor, uh, our A minor bar that's in the key of C, which now I could break down to, to, to just these three notes if I wanted to that we were doing. And I could add this one. That's cool. Okay. Uh, is there anything else I can do with that? I think I lost. What am I doing? So now I'm down. So <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to be on that third. This is where I'm supposed to be going up here. I got distracted. Oh my goodness. All right, so then I can go boom. There's that third here. And then there's a fifth. So I could do that. So I'm kind of trying to mute that middle D. I could play this and still grab that. So if I play it, what? Oh, now I messed up again. I'm on the C. And then I can grab down here. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. All right. All right. Let's leave it at that. My mind is still a little foggy. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. So this is the new string that has been revealed. That looks like quite a stretch. So now I can say, okay, I'm on this C. That's my main one. Let's not lose the focal point here. 5, 10, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. So it's nine notes away. That makes sense. So from here, way over. Ugh. Ah. Totally doable, but not very practical. I can grab that fifth. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, that's not really practical. But I see you out there. I'm glad you're there. So now we're going to go down here. Well, let's go to the same string. So this one is, uh, this, this is a similar position like when we started on the A, that would be our position number one, four, four notes away. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, three note away, minor third. And that was our, and then if we did it on the D, you can imagine that same position one, what I call position one, you might call it a, a G-shaped caged position can imagine doing that same position starting on that string and then we did it on G you could imagine again that same shape on this string but you have to go up because of the kink in the tuning and then again I can imagine that same shape as though I'm playing position one here for the minor mode on this string but the kink in the tuning is going to shift this one up right so it would be so same thing uh, pointer Pointer to pinky, nice comfortable position, the most comfortable, I guess, pinky position when you do that hammer on thing uh, over there. So there we have three notes away, that makes sense. What else can I do with that? Well, I have a five that's now been shifted up. So now here's the issue with the five. Usually it would be right here, but now we've crossed the fault line. So when I'm down here, like if I was up here on the A, I'd have the five right there, power chord. down here the five is here on the pinky again so if I want to arpeggiate 
I got one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, one, three, five. And then I've got a third uh, behind it here, which isn't totally useful. I've got another fifth back here, which we'll get to shortly. So let's keep it at that. And then let's go down to the next one. So now I'm below this string, which means now I want to have a distance of a three note away minor third. So normal. So if I'm here, I'm crossing the fault line from here to here would be five, four, three. So there's a three note away. It looks like it would right there. It looks like it's a major third, uh, but it's a minor third because of the fault line. So that's where it gets us all messed up. So I'm going to say this is there's our minor third across this distance. What else do I have with that? Of course, I have my fifth here. So there's my nice little uh, shape at the bottom, which, which I might add the fifth on top to have a very... This, I could add that here. And of course, that's part of our bar shape, so I could add the full bar like that, and there's my A minor bar shape. Alright. In the key of C. It's a C, but it's an A minor bar shape. Yeah, we know what you we know what you meant. Okay. Just making sure. Alright. So then obviously I have a I have this one up here. We saw that shape before. So I could break it out this way. All right, cool. And then that's basically it. You know, I have a G way out here. That's not that's not doable, is it? On the ten, if I was to pick up like that minor and then try to reach out to the ten, yeah, you're kidding. You're kidding yourself. If I reached out to that G, I'd have to grab like a third over here. Yeah, come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. All right, let's go down to the next one. So this one, we saw that the 11 up here, same note down here then on the 11. So, and, uh, and once again, that's going to be a difficult reach. <laughs> I could do it. All right, but not very practical. Okay, so that's going to be that one. Let's go to the next one, maybe the E down here, crossing the fault line. Uh, before that, let's do a joke. Halftime break joke here. <clears throat> Somewhat political, kind of half rant. Uh, so if that's going to bother you, you could... Uh, you could fast forward, but this is my practice session joke here. A little bit longer. I'm going to need some coffee on this one. This is a long one. I was inspired with my joke writing yesterday, and I had, I, no, it's not that great, but it's long, so that makes up for it. All right. Uh, am, I, am I the only one feeling a bit gaslit? by the Harris campaign's claim that the founders' intentions regarding the right to bear arms meant that we're allowed to, to wear, like, sleeveless T-shirts? You know, I mean, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm proud of these muscular guns over here, you know, but, and I, I can understand, obviously, why there should be a law allowing people to see these bad dogs, but, but I don't think my muscular guns are going to hold up hold up to a truck of terrorists with AKs rolling up, you know? I mean, I mean, what what if the king of England tries stepping into my house? You know, I like it it's 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 the it's it's the American dream of every school child to imagine the king of England crossing that door frame and then putting him down like Bambi's dad during hunting season. Okay, maybe that's a bit far. I mean, Maybe I could just dream of shooting the crown off the king's head and, and making him swim back home while clutching for life a barrel of discarded tea. 
I'm just kidding. You know, the royal family doesn't look all that all that dangerous at this point, to be honest. But still, plus, after the after the next woke remake, you know, Bambi probably won't even have a dad. Bambi won't even have a dad after. I mean, it. it okay, it'll, it should be more like I'll put down, put him down like Bambi's butch second mom who grew horns on her head after injecting copious amounts of testosterone directly into her deer veins, bulking up her deer body until everyone exclaimed, Dear God! And she's like, that's right. I am now a deer god. Do re mi so? No, that's no do. It doesn't matter though. The point is, American Americans need to be able to dream about shooting stuff. Plus, the dang lefties have gone too far, even with the, the bearing of arms being the, the use of sleeveless t-shirts thing. Now allowing giant, hulkish, hairy right to bear arms in the women's bathroom for crying out. Surely that's not what the founders intended. Honestly, seriously. W w women, women now need a gun to safely go into the bathroom because because of the leftists' interpretation of the right to bear arms. I mean, it's crazy. Dang, crazy postmodern deconstructivist would pro they'd probably allow an actual bear into the women's bathroom, stating the right to bear arms. You know, I mean, it's like it's like I see, but but that bear there. That's a that's a male bear. Can't can't we at least stop the male bale bear from going into the women's bathroom? I mean, you could see it's massive bear junk as it lumbers forward, you know? And they're like, "How do you know it's a male bear just cuz it has junk? Did did you ask for its pronouns? There, you see, grizzly. Grizzly is its pronouns. Grizzly self is clearly a non-binary pronoun. And was that so hard? Was that so hard to simply ask for pronouns? Where has the gentlemanliness gone in this country? Say, like, but, but what if the bear hurts the women in there? Then, then we'll lock that bear up, okay? That's what the legal system does. We'll lock the bear up in a penal institution for women. It's crazy, man. It's crazy, I tell you. Anyway, whatever. All right, so now we're on below the fault line. So let's go above it now. So now since we're, we've crossed the fault line, then all of the shapes are going to be a little different now. So, so, so let's go to the next one up. So where's this one? If I go here, I'm looking for the inverse distance now. So when I go below it, I'm looking for a distance of a three note away minor third. Therefore, when I go above it, 12 minus three is nine. Nine note away major six is what I'm looking for. So, uh, so when I go from here to here, I have to go this way. It would be five, negative five, and then six, seven, eight. Hold on a sec. Negative five, six, seven, eight, nine. I went the wrong way. I have to go from here to here to get to negative five. From here to here is a five note distance. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So notice what that does is it pushes this one out further to the left, which would make it less reachable uh if i had to reach it so it's still kind of possible if it wasn't an open string to reach it but it's quite a ways out there now now remember that we had the relative position up top when i looked at the c which is going to be you know slightly different because i wasn't crossing the kink in the tuning from here to here but i still want to kind of visualize that relative relationship it's easier to see possibly with this one where i would say if i counted this up it would be negative five, 10, and then nine. And so the distance between this note and this note from top to bottom, nine note away major six. It looks like this shape should look like, it looks to me if I was going from top to bottom, that that would be a, uh, a 10 note away minor seven. But because of the kink in the tuning, it that shape is now a, uh, a nine note a nine note away uh and if i could see that if i went up here to like this d so you'll recall if i was on 
if I was on like this top one we did before, like yesterday, this would be the shape, that A to the, to the, to the uh, F sharp, and then this would be the shape here, D to the, to the B, but then when I get down to this shape, I have to move this in to have it go like this because of the kink in the tuning uh, to see that same kind of distance. So top to bottom, nine note away, major six, bottom to top, three note away, minor third. Okay, so then obviously I have a fifth right here conveniently. So I have this shape, boom. So that's a nice shape to get to. I could add this to it, like that. So add another third at the bottom, or I could try to grab another root on the top. This is kind of like the minor C shape from a caged system, which is the wonky one. So I could try to add that E, which is a very hard thing to grab while grabbing these two. So more likely, I would have to drop, uh, uh, more likely I would be doing like this. So when I'm looking at this minor shape, the convenient thing to do is say I'm playing that minor shape and then drop down to this minor shape. practical standpoint. All right, so then we have that. And so I'm on that third. Is there anything else? I have a third here. I have a third up top that, that or a fifth up top. So I could go boom, boom to the B, but that's not, well, that's not too bad to do actually. And I can mute the A string. That's no, that's not right. The B is over here. It's like that sounds funny. So that's an unusual voicing. Probably uh, might could be useful. Maybe I could play with that. And then I've got another one down here, of course, a fifth down here. So I have. because I can go from this voice in here to this. And I could also grab that C in the middle, which would be, I would think of it normally as a C uh, chord, but I'm looking at it from this perspective, from the key of E as adding a 13, dropping the five. And then I can add the B. Normally I would add up top, I naturally want to grab that C but I'm gonna bring it back to the B. So now I've got, now I've got the, the added 13 in it, or I can do it this way and mute that 13. That's what I was looking for, all right. I think I grabbed the C last time. All right, something like that. Okay, okay. Uh, let's keep going. Let's go above to this one. So that now I'm looking for nine, I'm looking for nine notes away. So negative five, 10, and then 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine. So it would be from here to here. So that's cool. Not much I can do with that though. I might be able to grab. doable to do that because I'm grabbing the five but not the most practical of shapes so let's move on the new string that has been revealed up top is this one 
So now I can say negative 5, 10, 15. Let's bring it back down. 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 plus 5, 5, 6, 7. Uh, what did it say? <laughs> 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, which is 3, plus 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then this would be 9. 9 notes away. So I'll go from here, uh, from here to here. So that would be a 9 note away, major 6, bottom to top, 3 note away, minor 3rd. And then what else can I do with that? Well, I have a 5th here. So I can grab that. That's totally doable. And then I'm just muting the A string and the D string. I'm just muting these with my finger, with my bar. So that's doable, really, actually. I never do that. Kind of weird. Uh, I could... I have an open finger here. I can't do much with that. There's nothing really to grab except this string. I could try to, it's just useless. I could try to bar, I can grab that one. And then, oh no, I can grab that 13. I can grab this, which is a nine. And then I can bar this one. That's interesting. So that would be the three and then the C is a 13. If I want to bar that or I can not, I can just not play it. And then I've got the, the 9, and then the 5, and the 1. <laughs> That's kind of weird. All right, interesting. Muy interessante. So let's go to the same string. So now this would be kind of like we, the same shape, like if I was on the A position one, number one, which I can think on the second, on the D position number one. If I start on the G position number one, shifts up because of the kink of the tuning. And then if I start on the E, again, there's no kink in the tuning when I go down. So you can still think of this as though I'm like on position number one shape, where I've got the one, but I'm starting on this second to last string to the bottom. And then if I would repeat that on the top, whoops, this, this would repeat up here. Okay, so in any case, that's a three note away, uh, minor third, and then I have my fifth in the familiar position again, down here, because there's no kink in the tuning, it's under these, because this whole plate, this whole plate tectonic has moved up. So this bottom string, the relationship between these two strings is the same. It's just between these two strings, that's where the fault line is. So I'm gonna be like, arpeggiate, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five. So that's doable, and then I can arpeggiate this way. One, three, five, one, 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 three, five, one, three, five, one, one, three, five. I can kind of arpeggiate that way, <laughs> at least. If I knew, if I was good at it, I could do it. All right, let's move on to the next one. Last one, we'll go to the A. Let's go back on up. Moving on up. So now when I go to this one, the distance between these two strings should be basically the same, but then here's the fault line. So anytime I cross the fault line, it's gonna be a little bit, it's gonna be a different shape than when I was up here. And then I've revealed a new string. So in other words, when I was up here and I was looking above it, like from here to here, then the shapes are gonna be the same because they're both crossing the fault line. Like when I was on this E and I go up to this C, those shapes are not gonna be the same as going from A to E because there's no fault line between these two. But when I was going from this string to this string, that crosses the fault line and 
when I go from this string to this string, that also crosses the fault line. So I'm, I'm thinking right now that I should, I should be able to see parallel shapes that way when I cross two strings, right? So when I, when I just, and same if I go from this string to this string, it crosses the fault line. So if I went one, two, four strings up, and then this string, one, two, three, four strings up, crosses the fault line. So I should be able to see, uh, even though the fault line is, is landing in a different spot between those two, it's doing the same thing, shifting up the plate tectonic down here. So it should be a parallel shape, I'm thinking. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. No, I haven't really thought about it that way before. So, so that's gonna be the idea. And now, of course, we've revealed a new string up top, uh, and that's the new one. So now let's go on this one. And if I go above it, so now I'm looking for a distance of the inverse between these strings, which is gonna be the same distance that we had everything up here. So that would be, uh, three note away minor third minus 12 12 minus three is nine so this would be negative five six seven eight nine so similarly up here we had negative five six seven eight nine right here and it would be here and then you know same here five six seven eight nine right negative five six seven. but then when i went to here it was negative five six seven eight nine right because it was shifted between these two fault lines. But now we're back to normal, negative five, six, seven, eight, nine, if I'm starting from this A. Okay, so can I reach that? So it's gonna be the C, it's reachable. It's reachable, but not very practical. So that's cool. All right, that's that one. Let's go above it again. So now I'm gonna go here. I'm looking for nine note distance, so it would be five, 10, no, I'm sorry, five here, and then 10 here because of the kink in the tuning and then bringing it back to nine. So note again, I have this distance from C to A, which is a nine note away major six from A to C, bottom of top, therefore inverse three note away minor third. That was the same shape when I was looking at this E going up two strings to the G. But when I went up, so so notice that's parallel but when i went up uh when i went up to the if i went up to the c here then go then then the shape is going to be uh different right so in other words if if i go down like this way normally i see the the nine if i looked at the a top to bottom a nine note away would look like this <laughs> from the A to this F sharp, and then here, it would be like this, from uh, the D to the B, and then here, from the G, that's when it shifts up, because of the kink in the tuning, because now I'm crossing the kink of the tuning down here on this one, okay. I think that makes sense. All right, so then of course I have an E right in between here, which is our fifth, so this would be, the, the roots on the bottom, the fifth right above it like normal, and then the third. Okay, so that's cool. That's a nice convenient little shape. And then if I could grab this one up top, I can actually put an A on top of it. So I can go. And of course this whole shape is part of my bar shape. If I went all the way to the top, like this, A, E, A, one, five, three, or yeah, one, five, one, three, five, one. Okay. And then I can go, I could go, you know, just those three at the same kind of bar shape. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's go to this one. So I'm looking for a six note distance. So our nine note distance. So it would be negative five, 10, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine. So I'm on here going to the C on the 10th fret right there. Not very practical to do much with though all right 
So let's just move on to the next one. So now I'm looking for a nine uh, node away distance. Ne so negative five, negative 10, negative 15. Let's bring it back down. 15 minus 12, five minus two is three, plus five is eight. And this brings me to nine. So that makes sense. So now I'm going from here to here. So this should be the same distance or the same shape that I had when I was up on this string, the E going to this G, but it'd be a different shape if I go to, from the C uh, because of the kink in the tuning. So let's go from here to here. Is there anything else I can do with this? I have an E right above it this time. Now that, that fifth is in a different place than when I was on the E here because again, now this one didn't cross the kink in the tuning. The kink in the tuning. Man, it's a nightmare. All right, so then I got, I'm gonna mute these two. So that's kind of interesting. I could try to uh, bar this. So I could, I could grab, might as well grab this three while I'm here. So now I've got, that's kind of cool. So it kind of looks like an A shape, but it's not because I'm grabbing. Huh. Because it, it's not, so that's interesting because I could grab this G and that would be throwing in the seven. And if I look at that shape, then it would look like a C major A shape, bar shape. But I'm looking at it from the perspective of an A minor that has a seven included in it. Oh my goodness, that's hurting my head. Just stop, just stop. Okay. So then, uh, let's just stop it there. All right, let me noodle around a bit. I'm just kind of noodling around in the key of a minor key. So what was I, I was kind of playing with like, trying to slide into this A more because I've been playing A minor like here and then just doing my pentatonic thing or my position one but then I play on this minor shape which I really like and then I try to add the blue note which is going to be the flat five so there's a flat five here flat five here flat five here and then I don't play this one flat five here a lot flat five here so I try to throw those in but then I'm also thinking now that I'm gonna slide into like the A so then I kind of slide in so I can add that means I can slide in like that so I have another kind of added slide note that I'm was been playing with more because mo normally I've been doing like and then sliding the blue note the flat five but then when I go home I'm thinking I slide the note right before home sliding into that A A minor sliding Back in the key, from the blue note, back in the key, sliding 
from the note before the root to the root. Back to A minor. This too, because this is the this is the also the the blues note. So I like. But I can do that here. Here's the blues note. But I don't do that slide as much right there. two strings. trying to practice playing like uh, two notes per string just walking back and forth on each string like from the top string we'll start on the A string so if I walked it up and then I ended off with an A chord A minor walking it back. And of course I can add the open strings on top because I'm in the key of A minor. this string and walk it back try to do that with three notes per string.
which is a little bit more difficult. strings. So now I'm going to try to get one note per finger no matter what the stretch is. So if I'll... I'm going to start from here because that I go four I can go up here to give me my four strings and then I'm going to repeat it with a three string. And the, so this is what I'm doing here I'm going and then one note per string four that's four notes up and then so then I played one finger per four notes but now I'm going to walk it back up just three strings which means my fingering is different. Well, no. because here I'm using my pinky up here and then my ring finger and then my middle and then I need, I need to learn my fingering. They had some kind of fingering shorthand for calling it, but whatever, pointer. But then when I go back up, I go pointer, middle, and then pinky. I don't hit this one with my ring. I hit it with my pinky because I'm only going three notes up. So... Pinky, when I go four notes up, pinky, ring, middle, pointer, and then three notes up, pointer, middle, pinky, pinky, middle, pointer. Going here, pointer, middle, ring, pinky, pinky, ring, middle, pointer, but then three notes up, Pointer, ring, pinky. And then going here, four notes up. Pointer, middle, ring, pinky, pinky, ring, middle, pointer, but then three notes up. Because I'm because now I have to span three notes, I'm gonna go pointer, ring, and then pinky. And then here, pointer, middle, ring, four notes up to the pinky, pinky, middle, pointer, I'm sorry, and then, and then three notes up, pointer, middle, and then pinky. I'm not sure that's the best way to do it, but that's what I, that's what I've been, <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> You might not want to learn this until you verify that it's the best way to do it because I might be practicing it wrong, which is a really stupid thing to do. But <laughs> I think it's the best way based on what I'm seeing right now. I'm going to...